Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church. It is wonderful to see all your happy faces there in front of me this morning. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Katie, and I'm a member of this 10 a.m. congregation. Uh, welcome to everyone, whether you're here online, welcome to you in your nice warm homes, probably, and welcome to us here at church in our nice warm church. Today is our annual Thanksgiving Sunday. I know many of you will be prepared for that and will have come this morning uh, with prepared and thankful hearts. While every Sunday, and in fact every day, is a day to be giving thanks to God for his goodness to us in the Lord Jesus, today is a special day in which we focus on this. There's so much to be thankful for in life, isn't there? And we can be thankful for one another. That's a good place, uh, perhaps, to start. And today we can be especially thankful for a very little person here among us called Alani. And uh, now Alani at Putharaj has come here this morning uh, with her mum and dad and brothers, as usual. Uh, but Alani, you've brought a great big contingent of your family with you today. <laughs> and we'd really like to welcome you specially. Uh, because today, Alani gets baptised. So that is something to look forward to. Great celebration. A bit later, Edwin will be speaking to us from the Bible about the promises of God, particularly our glorious inheritance. Now that is something to be really thankful about, isn't it? But let's start our service with a song. So over to Justin, the band. Good morning at my welcome to Katie's. I invite you to stand and sing a blessed be your name. Yeah. 
Well, the other day I jumped in my car, ready to drive to my parents' place, which is about 45 minutes from Riverston, where I live. And I didn't have any good podcasts to listen to. Uh, my phone had decided not to connect to my car speakers, so I couldn't use Spotify. Um, and then my thoughts turned to, you know, I can make a better choice here. And as I drove, I decided that I would spend the whole time, as much as I could, thanking God for everything that I could think of. So I started with everything I could think of, all the little things and the big things, and guess how far I got in my drive until I finished. I got all the way there, and I was still thanking God for things. There is just so much to be thankful for when we stop and think about it. Where do we start? Well, maybe this is a good place to start. 1 Peter chapter 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, an inheritance that can never spoil, never fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith is shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice. Let's pray and give God thanks. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have shown us great mercy by giving us a new life and a new living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As you have raised him up from the dead, so you have raised us. Thank you for giving us a glorious inheritance, one we look forward to enjoying forever, an inheritance that you are keeping safe for us in heaven until we get there. Thank you for shielding us by your power as we wait for our Saviour to return. And thank you for the joy that gives us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, over to Steve. Well, good morning, everyone. Great to see you. Um, welcome to everyone here for the baptism. Um, but welcome, if you're here every week, welcome to you. Uh, or maybe this is your first time here and you're not here for the baptism. Uh, a warm word of welcome uh, to you as well. I'd uh, love to meet you afterwards. Well, children, we give thanks for you. Uh, children, wonderful gift of God. Yep, yep. And not, not a challenge at any, any point. Always a, a wonderful joy. Yeah, so it can, can be a challenge sometimes, but we are thankful, thankful to God um, for every life, for children, and so uh, this morning especially, uh, we're going to take the next few minutes uh, giving thanks uh, to God uh, for Alani, a uh, wonderful uh, gift of God, so we're going to be baptising her this morning, uh, so we're going to invite her, uh, Joel and Renusha, Alani, and yep, the boys as well. Come on up, yep, grab the microphone, give them a little hand, make them feel loved and welcome. All right, welcome to you. Uh, great to, to see you all uh, again this, this Sunday morning. Uh, so, um, Alani was born 31st of August 2019, so coming up to um, 22 months. So it's, uh, yeah, a real uh, privilege, honour to be baptising her uh, this morning. Uh, I love her name and where her name comes from. So do you want to share uh, with everyone uh, the, the significance of, of her name? Um, yeah, so Alani is an actual name that exists, but um, for us, uh, we chose it because... Um, we thought of it as the, um, it's a mix between our two mothers' names. So my mother's English name is Stella and Joel's mother's name is Rani. So we got the Ella and the Ani and put it together. And so the significance for us is that um, Alani's name is a combination of her two grandmothers. So, yeah. 
<laughs> All right, fantastic. Uh, can you share with us what is it um, that you, you love about Alani and are, are thankful uh, to God uh, for her? Um, so I surveyed her brothers and um, <laughs> Levi says that he's uh, thankful to God for Alani because she's very cute. Um, he's a very doting older brother. When I asked Asha, he said, I don't know. <laughs> what are you thankful to God for? I don't know. So, um, but I guess for us, um, might not see it in her face right now because she didn't sleep well last night, but um, uh, she's actually quite fun-loving and playful by nature. Um, she doesn't shy away from having a good time, so um, I like that confidence about her. Um, we could also see that she has a distinct uh, sense of humour coming through, and it's a pretty cheeky sense of humour, which we quite enjoy. And um, Who did she get that from? Um, I actually think she got it from Joel's mother, so <laughs> that's where I think she gets it from. Um, and uh, yeah, and so I guess growing up with two brothers to contend with every day, she's also, um, she doesn't back away. Um, she stands up for herself and, you know, gives them a good run for their money, so yeah. yeah so, she needs yeah. to. Yeah, she needs to, exactly. <laughs> and I guess we're thankful to God um, for her, for her life, and um the joy and delight that she is to us and, yeah, what she's added to our family. So. Yeah, just an example of her cheekiness. She started calling me Joel rather than <laughs> Appa just to, just to wind me up. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, let, let me give thanks to, to God. Uh, Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you uh, for blessing Joel and Renusha uh, with a daughter, uh, with Alani. Uh, you created her inmost being knit her together in her mother's womb. Uh, she is fearfully and wonderfully made. So we thank you, we praise you for who she is uh, and for who she is becoming. May she grow to know your love and your goodness uh, through the love of her parents. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, can you tell us um, why is it that you are baptising Alani this morning? Uh, yep, so... Um I think for two main reasons. Um, the first one is uh, we really want to celebrate um, God and his grace and mercy including, in including Alani uh, in his, his family. Uh, it's by his grace and we just want to, in this symbolic act, really declare that. Um, the other reason, I guess, um, together with the church and family and friends, uh, just really recommit, commit. She's two years, so recommit. We've been doing it all this time. But um, uh, just to uh, raise her knowing um, the God who loves her um, and a Jesus who died for her. Um, so, yeah, just prayerfully committing to that um, in front of people so we're kind of kept accountable as well. Um, so those two reasons. Yeah, yeah, very good, um, which is why we're here this morning and a number of you uh, have been invited to be here, to be a part of it, to share in it and to witness it. And as Joel said, um, this is a, a symbol. Um, so this is ordinary water, from the, from the taps here, it's not special holy water. Um, it's not the water this morning that we'll baptise her with that, that saves her or, or makes her a Christian. Um, that is only that the blood of Jesus that does that. Uh, Jesus, his death on the cross, uh, he is the one who forgives our sin, uh, who cleanses us uh, and puts us in a right relationship uh, with God. Um, but um, Alani is... Uh, being raised as part of a Christian family. Um, that's, that is uh, who she is. This family, a family of faith, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, in Ephesians uh, 6 verse 1, it says there that children are to uh, obey their parents uh, in the Lord. Uh, so in the Lord there, I think, I think that is uh, significant that uh, we treat these children in part of a Christian family that they are in, in the Lord. Uh, they are belonging to God. Uh, so it's not that being raised in a Christian family like makes, makes her, makes the children uh, Christian, uh, but they're, they're being raised each day to know the love of God. Uh, and so um, we, we look at them, we treat them uh, as, as children of God. And it is our hope, it is our prayer uh, that as Alani keeps to, to grow, uh, she herself uh, will come to be able to put uh, her own faith uh, in Jesus and will understand uh, all of this, uh, will know God's love and will want to live out all her days uh, following uh, Jesus. So this is a, a sign of what we're doing this morning. 
and it points us to Jesus, uh, what Jesus has done on the cross, uh, his, his death on the cross. That is what forgives us of our sin, cleanses us, uh, and allows us to have that relationship uh, with God. So uh, let me ask uh, you uh, a few questions. I know the answers, and many of us do, but we want to we wanna hear it. Um, so let, let me ask uh, Joel and Renusha, uh, have you turned to Christ and trust him alone for your salvation? I have. And do you bring Alani to be baptised with the prayer that she will come to know Jesus Christ as her Lord and Saviour? We do. And will you, by God's grace, strive to raise Alani as a follower of Jesus teaching her to obey all that Jesus commanded and to serve Jesus faithfully in her life. With God's help, we will. All right, very good. Now, two godparents, uh, so Sanjay and Doris, so make them welcome as they uh, come on up. All right, as they're coming on up, do you want to... Introduce them. Who are these lovely people? How do you know them? What's uh, yep. So we've our circles interact in many ways, but um, mainly Sanjay and my family grew up in church uh, together. Um, and Doris, we've known uh, on and off. We kind of went to church. Our Renisha did with her as well. Um, but we really admire them for their pray- prayerful approach and seeing to honour God in everything. And happy they accepted um, uh, to be Alani's godparents. Yeah. Fantastic. So. Yeah, one of the big roles as a, as a godparent is, is to be praying uh, for, for this family and particularly for Alani uh, and for, for Joel and Renusha. So uh, let me ask you um, some similar questions. Uh, Sanjay and Doris, uh, have you turned to Christ and trust him alone for your salvation? We have. And will you pray for Alani and support Joel and Renusha in the promises that they have just made? With God's help, we will. All right, very good. And now a question uh, for all of us, um, which will come up on the screen. Yep, so you, you can reply nice and loud so that these guys can hear you in the, in the yellow. Uh, so will you pray for Joel and Renusha and Alani and support them in the promises they've just made? With God's help, we will. There you go, a room full of people who have committed to support you guys uh, and, and to pray. So let's, let's affirm uh, the faith uh, that we are, are baptising Alani into. Uh, so the words of the Apostles' Creed, um, words, statement of belief that believers have been saying for centuries and centuries, uh, and uh, particularly at, at baptism. So uh, let us um, together and everyone here uh, say these words um, together. What is it that we believe? We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. There he shall come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Uh, let, Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in your great love, you call us to know you and to trust you. Increase this knowledge and strengthen our faith. In your mercy, we ask that Alani, whom we baptise in this water, may be born again by the Holy Spirit, cleansed from all sin, and inherit your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we see how this goes, Sam. Eh? <laughs> well, Alani, Hannah, Aputharaj, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Give her a clap. Yep. So, Alani, we welcome you into the family here, the family of Christ at Stanhope Anglican Church, and we pray that you continue uh, to grow in the knowledge and the love of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 There you go. All right, we're going to continue um, in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day that we can get together to celebrate Alani's baptism. We want to thank you first and foremost for the death of your son, Jesus, allowing us to have a relationship with you, God the Father, and for Jesus' glorious resurrection, which allows us to have eternal life with you. Thank you for the beautiful service that we have witnessed so far today. Thank you for the freedom that we enjoy, Lord, to, to gather here in your place of worship, something that is not so easily enjoyed in many places in the world. Lord, we thank you for Alani. Thank you for the wonderful blessing that she is to all of us. We know that children are a gift from you, so we thank you for her and the miracle that she is. We ask that as she grows older, that she will get to know you in a personal way. We pray that you be with her parents, Joel and Renisha, and her brothers, grandparents, family and friends, and we ask for wisdom and care so that we can, that, so that we can all contribute to her life in your truths. Lord, so we ask that you will always be her rock and foundation, and we thank you once again for this beautiful day. We pray all these things in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, little certificate for you and for you guys. And a little book. For her. All right, well done, well done, Alani. All right, give her a little clap. All right, so I want to um, let you know a few things that are happening uh, in, in our church. Uh, so, we have, this is our, our Thanksgiving uh, Sunday, and so for the regulars here, been encouraged uh, this week um, to make it a, a Thanksgiving uh, week. So, for those who took that up and have been working their way uh, through that, um, the, the five days of thankfulness, uh, I hope that that has been helpful for you. Um, like Katie, being able to reflect and think about all the things that, that we have to be thankful for. Uh, hopefully this has done that uh, for you as well, uh, whether that be spiritually, uh, physically, materially, uh, so many things that we do have to be thankful for. And so uh, today, uh, for the regulars, uh, there is the opportunity to make a, a special Thanksgiving gift. Uh, so you might have done that throughout the week. Um, you're able to do that uh, today. Uh, there is a box up the back, uh, or you can do that online. Uh, there is an SRE fund, so um, giving towards the, the ministry that we have taking place in schools. Um, that is uh, tax deductible as well. Um, so if you uh, are giving to that, uh, then you, you do need to do so today or tomorrow, uh, just so that we can process uh, that to you uh, in time. If you've got any questions about that, uh, please uh, do let me know. Uh, and do that um, today uh, would be great. And so we've had this, this week of intentionally trying to be thankful, um, but it's not just one week in the year because every day, every day we, we get up, we, we have to be thankful. Um, every, every day is another day that the Lord has given us. Uh, so may we be thankful to Him uh, and for those trusting Jesus each day, give, give thanks that you're a child of God. Praise Him. He has given you another day to know Him, to love Him, to serve Him. Uh, so may we uh, do that. Um, there is um, parents' rooms, uh, 
Two rooms just behind us there. So if any point during this service uh, you need that, uh, you can make use uh, of those, those rooms there. A few other things that are happening uh, in, in our church. Uh, so start out, this is something we do each, each month. This is a, particularly for those who are new. Uh, we want to help you to be able to connect in. Uh, we want you to, to love being part of our church uh, so that you can uh, know God's love and that you can really uh, belong and um, be a part of this church so that you can keep growing uh, um, with us all. Uh, so start out, not tomorrow night, the following Monday for about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, we'll get together with other uh, newish people um, and I will share with you a little bit more uh, about our church. You might have some questions and we'll consider what might be for you the next step uh, for you to be uh, connected and getting involved uh, here at our church. Uh, a few other things that are coming up. Um, we also have, for the, the young adults, uh, happening in a couple of weeks, uh, dinner, games night, which will be happening here Tuesday the 6th. And we also um, have the trivia, the mission trip, support night, coming up in a few weeks. So that's Saturday the 10th of July. So we heard from Rebecca last week. Um, at this night, we'll have a chance to hear a little bit more, uh, but to support her uh, as she uh, heads to the Northern Territory for a few weeks um, later on in the year. I think that's it for now. So we have a number of groups uh, for the kids and the youth. Uh, so they're going to head to their groups right now. This Thursday, if you're in year seven or up, uh, youth group this week, um, We'll finish up here with a social from 5.30, uh, including uh, dinner, games, fire pit, uh, smalls, lots of fun things. All right, so kids groups are on now. Uh, so there is a creche and a preschool just down the corridor in meeting room one. And then in the hub, we've got groups for the K to twos, the year three to fives, and the year six to eights. All right. You, as they head out, you might quickly want to say hello to the person uh, near you. And then I think the band are going to come on up and we'll be singing our next song. We're going to have a time of prayer now. But first of all, I'd like to read you some words from Psalm 145. I will extol you, my Lord and King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will extol you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. And the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving towards all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. So let's pray now and call on our Lord. We come to you now, Lord, in thanksgiving for all you are and all you have done. Your mercy is new every morning. You are rich in love. Your grace is poured out upon us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Your spirit lives within us. We are your children and co-heirs with Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you have poured upon us. We thank you for our country and for a government that seeks the good of its citizens. Thank you for those who care for the poor, the marginalised, the sick, the needy. We thank you for those who love us, for our families, friends, and for our church community here at Stanhope. Thank you for our new building. Thank you for those who serve us each week on Sundays and during the week, for our various ministries with small groups, kids' church, youth group, ESL, scripture in schools, 
morning tea, cleaning roster, gardening, and more. Thank you. Yet we acknowledge our failure to live and serve you as we should. And we come to you in repentance and faith, praying together these words of confession, which will come up on the screen. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have often gone our own way and rejected your will for our lives. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you and to please you in every way. For the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Your word says in 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We do pray for our church community here. We thank you, Lord, for the many new people who have joined us in the last months. May they find a warm welcome and a spiritual home among us. Help us, Lord, to be a welcoming church which shows your love in our community. May we be a church where your peace dwells in our hearts because we have turned to you in repentance and faith. May your spirit work among us so that we clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience and help us as your people to put on love which binds us all together. May we forgive any grievances as you forgive us. We pray for our leaders here at church, for Steve, Edwin, Rachel, James as he studies. We pray for David and Kathy for their role as village chaplains and for all that lead in various ways. May each person lead faithfully and with integrity, handling your word truthfully and treating your people with love and respect at all times. As many activities break for school holidays, may you refresh us all and fill each of us with a desire to know you better and to serve you more fully. We pray your protection on those who are travelling. And we thank you for the baptism today of Alani and pray that you will give Joel and Renusha wisdom as they seek to bring her, Levi and Asher up in the knowledge and love of you. We pray, Lord, for those among us who are sick, grieving, troubled, or in any other need. May they know your comfort and your healing power. Lord, you give strength to the weary and renew the strength of those who hope in you. Help them, Lord, not to fear, for you are with them. Help them not to be dismayed, for you are their God. Strengthen them and uphold them with your righteous right hand. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd invite you to stand as we sing um, in celebration of the word of God. Because Jesus is the faithful word of God. Please stand with us.
The Bible reading today is in two parts. We're reading from Joshua chapter 13, verses 1 to 8, and then from chapter 21, verses 43 to 45. Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. When Joshua had grown old, the Lord said to him, You are now very old, and there are still very large areas of land to be taken over. This is the land that remains. All the regions of the Philistines and Geshurites, from the Shihor River on the east of Egypt to the territory of Ekron on the north, all of it counted as Canaanite, though held by the five Philistine rulers in Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron, the territory of the Avites on the south, all the land of the Canaanites from Ara of the Sidonians as far as Apek and the border of the Amorites, the area of Byblos and all Lebanon to the east, from Baal Gad below Mount Hermon to Levo Hamath. As for all the inhabitants of the mountain regions from Lebanon to Misrephoth, Mayim, that is, all the Sidonians, I myself will drive them out before the Israelites. Be sure to allocate this land to Israel for an inheritance as I have instructed you, and divide it as an inheritance among the nine tribes and half of the tribe of Manasseh. The other half of Manasseh, the Reubenites and the Gadites, had received the inheritance that Moses had given them east of the Jordan, as he, the servant of the Lord, had assigned it to them. Chapter 21, verse 43. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give their ancestors 
and they took possession of it and settled there. The Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their ancestors. Not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord gave all their enemies into their hands. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Every one was fulfilled. This is the word of God. Thank you, Katie, for reading the Word of God for us this morning. My name is uh, Edwin Tambiaya, and my Sri Lankan friends will know me as Karuna Tambiaya. Uh, And uh, I'm delighted to bring God's Word to you this morning. We promise, we deliver, is the slogan that most of the business organizations tell their valued customers. Even when we built this facility, the builder would have given us a building plan or even a prototype, which is a miniature version of this facility, and he would have promised us that he would deliver the facility on time and according to budget. Businesses take pride in telling their customers, we promise we deliver. But what happens actually in the business world is quite a different thing. Um, Lots of the promises don't get delivered on time and within budget. But 4,000 years ago, God made a promise to Abraham that he would give the land of the Canaanites to his descendants as their possession. And God assumed the entire responsibility to make good on that promise. All what the Israelites had to do was to go into the promised land and live in holiness and in obedience to the Lord. A business organization may make some promises to their customers to deliver certain goods and services with a view to making a profit. But did you ever ask yourself, why did God promise Abraham this land for his descendants? Did you ever ask yourself that question? The answer is because God is continuing his work of salvation and restoration of humanity unto himself after the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. The purpose of giving the land to the Israelites was that they would become a lamp or a a light unto the Gentiles so that all the peoples of the world may know this true and living God and enter into his blessings and his rest through them. So, our passage this morning is from Joshua chapter 13 to chapter 21. Eight chapters. I hope. Nine. Wow. I hope you have brought your snacks to listen to a three hour sermon. (laughs) But all these nine chapters tell us how the promises of God were fulfilled. Uh, that God made to Abraham was fulfilled uh, many centuries ago during Joshua's time. The main idea of these nine chapters is given to us in chapter 21, verses 43 to 45. So let me read that to you again. Thus the Lord gave to Israel all the land that he swore to give to their fathers, And they took possession of it, and they settled there. And the Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their fathers. Not one of all their enemies had withstood them, for the Lord had given all their enemies into their hands. Not one word of all the good promises of the Lord 
had made to the house of Israel had failed, all came to pass. So we read in verse 45 that all the promises that God made which uh, to Abraham around 500 years before Joshua's time were fulfilled. So, for the sake of uh, the visitors who have joined us this morning uh, to witness uh, Elani's baptism, I would like to bring them up to speed with what happened after chapter 12. Now, Elani's baptism uh, is a beautiful uh, event that took place today. As you witness, the whole church has affirmed that they with uh, Joel and uh, Renusha will bring up Elani uh, in the ways of God. Uh, she is the latest and the youngest member, I believe, who had been inducted into our church. So that's a good thing this morning. But it's always good to welcome visitors amongst our midst. I already see many familiar faces there, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy your time with us this morning, and even as you welcome you lovingly in our midst, the whole church wants to get to know you after the service. So the story up to chapter 12 is that God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt and brought them right up to the entrance of the promised land. And they were standing on the eastern side of the river Jordan. And then they crossed the Jordan on dry ground and came over to the western side. And then they went down south. They captured the lands in south and then moved up north. That's where we are up to chapter 12. And under God, Joshua was able to capture all the land that he had to capture. And he gave them the inheritance to four tribes. The tribes of Reuben, the tribes of Judah, the tribe of Ephraim, and the tribe of Manasseh. They have got the inheritance. But in chapter 13, we are told that there was plenty of more land to be captured. And seven more, the tribes need, they needed to get their land allocated for them. Uh, you might wonder, why seven tribes? Because there are 12 tribes in Israel. Seven plus four is 11. Because the tribe of Levi are priests. And they do not, they have to live among the 11 tribes and minister to those tribes. That is why a special allocation for the tribe of Levi was not made. And they were allocated land within the 11 tribes so that they can live amongst them and minister to them. So Joshua called all the people unto himself and said, look, there are lots of land to capture and seven tribes had to be allocated their land. He asked him to choose three men from each of the seven tribes that have not got their land already to go out and survey the area and allocate uh, and, and, and divide the land into seven allotments and write a description of each allotment and bring it to him. Then he would cast lots in the presence of God and allocate the land to each of those tribes. So just as he said, they came back to him and Joshua cast lots and he allocated the land to each of the seven tribes. And now we go straight to chapter 21, verses 43 to 45, where it is said that in verse 45, not one word of all the, all the good promises that the Lord had made to the house of Israel had failed, all came to pass. Now I want to ask you a question, friends. Does that mean that the, the tribes of Israel have already gone into their promised and allocated land and, chased and, and, and occupied the land 
after chasing the inhabitants there. What do you reckon? Have they already done it or not? The answer is no. The answer is no. The land has only been allocated to them and they have to go in and take possession of the land. So what's going on in verse 45? Why is the Bible telling us that all the promises of God have been fulfilled? The allocation of the land to the seven tribes is God's promise to them. And it is good as done. God has spoken. But the big question is, will the tribes, in obedience to God, go out and capture the land and chase out the people of, uh, of Canaan and occupy the land as God wanted them to? To be a light unto the Gentiles uh, to be the source of salvation, a vehicle of salvation for the nations uh, to come to know the Lord and his rest. We must not lose track of one thing. The occupation of the land by the children of Israel is for the singular purpose of being a witness to the Lord, to the nations of the world so that they can come in to the rest of God as well. That's the purpose for which it's given. Therefore, the occupation of the land, as far as the Old Testament is concerned, the entire Old Testament is concerned, is God's mission to the world. That's how the Old Testament views the occupation of the land, the promised land, by the children of Israel. So the main idea that we read in chapter 21, verses 43 to 45, um, is a tension between the promises of God on the one hand and human responsibility on the other. That's the tension that these nine chapters play out to us in the form of two stories. The first story is the story of Caleb and his faithfulness in occupying the land. And the second story is the story of the tribes of Israel, their half-hearted, partial obedience to the promises of God. The law of the Holy Spirit has put these two stories in this section for the church as a stark warning to the church as we engage in God's mission in the world today. So let me bring up the structure of these eight passages, eight cha uh, nine chapters to you. Firstly, the main idea comes from chapter 21, verses 43 to 45. It's a tension between God's promises and human responsibility. And it's explained to us in two stories. The story of Caleb, God's promises and Caleb's attitudes and actions. Then comes the, story, the promise of God and the attitudes and actions of the tribes of Israel. And it has an application because Israel failed. All the pro promises of God are fulfilled in Christ. And we become the people of God. And we have a mission to accomplish in this world, which we will look a little later on. So that's where we are going with these nine chapters. It's very clear, I think. Uh, and we're going to wrap it up in 20 minutes, hopefully. Okay, let's look at the first story. God's promises to, and Caleb's obedience. In chapter 14 and 15, uh, we read the story of Caleb. Uh, Caleb was the sp one of the spies, along with Joshua, who brought a good and positive report to Moses when they went out to explore the land. And because of his steadfastness and his, and his faithfulness, God promised him 
a portion of the promised land. And we read about that in Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. And it was also confirmed by Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 35, uh, chapter 1, verses 35 and 36. And Caleb went up to Moses, uh, went up to Joshua, and he claimed his inheritance from Joshua. And Joshua blessed him, and he gave him his inheritance. So in the next chapter, in chapter 15, we read that Caleb went and chased the Anakites away from the, the land, of, from the city of Hebron, and occupied it. Many of you might know who the Anakites were. They were the people whom the other spies described to, to the people of Israel as giants. Oh, we look like grasshoppers in their eyes. Can't do it. Can't go into the land and occupy it. It's too hard for us. And here we find Caleb under God. Because he was faithful, God helped him to chase them away from the city of Hebron, and he occupied it. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, has put this story in this section, of, in this section about Caleb as an example for the other tribes of Israel to emulate. To us living in the New Testament era, under the New Covenant, we too have a promise of God. Our dominant promise from God is Christ and His Spirit indwelling in us with the purpose to make disciples of all nations. That is our mandate. And uh, the promise is Christ and His Spirit are available to us, are given to us. Just as much as the promise to the children of Israel was given in the midst of challenges, our promise and our mandate is also given to us in the midst of challenges to go and make disciples of all nations. And we see that last, we saw last week Steve explaining what the challenge is to us. 50,000 people in our parish, 250,000 people in our area need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the challenge we have. That is the challenge we have. And I want to ask you, Christian friends, how does this word, revival, figure in your vocabulary? Do you speak that word often in your conversations? Uh, does your social media posts have that word revival in it? Does that word revival excite you? If it doesn't, friends, we need to start praying for revival. I want to tell you lovingly, my friends, a church that does not yearn for revival will not have it. So, the story of Caleb is also placed in this section of the Bible as an example for the church to emulate. God's word is never out of season. What was true to them then is true to us now. Because the word of God is a double-edged sword. It never goes out of season. Then we come to the next story. If that be the case, then how did the other tribes of Israel fare in their zeal to occupy the promised land? One of the recurring themes in these nine chapters as we read through them is 
in verse chapter 15, verse 63, chapter 16, verse 10, chapter 17, verse 12, is that the tribes of Israel who got the inheritance were unable or unwilling to chase the Canaanites away from their land. They used them as forced labor. They did not care to obey God fully. Such was the case with the tribe of Judah. Such was the case with the tribe of Ephraim. Such was the case with the tribe of Manasseh. They didn't chase him. And that does not portend well for the rest of the tribes of Israel. Because partial obedience to God is no obedience at all. So we soon find out in the next book, that is the book of Judges, that too in chapter 1, it is told to us that all the tribes of Israel failed to drive out the Canaanites from their land. They used them as forced labor and cheap labor, contrary to what God wanted them to do. And in chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, we read of God's response to them. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and said, you have disobeyed my voice. And you know what? Boys and girls, now you are stuck. You are stuck with them. I will not drive them out for you anymore. They will be a thorn in your side and a snare to you. You are stuck with them. Friends, that's what happened when we continuously and deliberately disobey the Lord all the time. At a point in time, God says, that's it. You're done with me. It happened in the past, in, in, in the book of Exodus. It's there in the book of Romans. It's there everywhere else as individual examples. And when the people heard that, they lifted up their voices and cried. And that was a bit too late, wasn't it? Uh, yes, in the end, uh, Israel was tormented by their presence. They constantly drew them into idol worship. They constantly made them to commit their abominable sins which we read in the book of Deuteronomy, the sins of child sacrifice, the sins of incest, the sins of, of uh, occult, the sins of calling the spirits of, dead, of the dead. Even Saul, King Saul, called the sp dead spirit of Samuel. And in the end, friends, Israel after Solomon was divided into two kingdoms. The northern kingdom was destroyed by the, As by the Assyrians in 722 BC, and we never hear about the 10 tribes again in the Bible. And in 589 BC, the southern kingdom, Judah and Benjamin, were destroyed by the ba Babylonians. And with that, Israel lost its election and its right and its privilege to be the light to the Gentiles. And that's where the sad end of partial and half-hearted obedience came to an end. Now, I want to tell the young people of our church, if you are got your driving license and if you are going to uni and uh, trying to lead an uh, independent life, uh, yes, you will. And I want to tell you that the church expects you, God expects you and we expect you to do two things. As you get your newfound freedom, please live a life of holiness and a life of total obedience to God. That will set you up for success in life. Okay, so we come to the final point. 
That, so that's the failure of Israel to put an end. Uh, did, did it put an end to God's plans of saving humanity? Fortunately, our sins don't drive God away from us. The cycle that we observe in the Old Testament is sin, punishment, and then God's grace kicks in after that. So all what he does is the spotlight, the focus of the spotlight from the nation of Israel is now turned to God's Messiah, Jesus Christ, the righteous. We need someone who can take away our heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. We need someone who can give us the Holy Spirit of God and cause us to walk in, the, in obedience to God. Jesus Christ, through his total obedience to the Lord, to the Father, on the cross, opened the way for us, for our salvation. And he became the light to the world, which Israel could not do. Israel was unwilling or unable to obey the Lord. And Jesus fulfilled that role with his total obedience. And he is able to give us a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone. He is able to put in the spirit of Holy Spirit within us and cause us to walk in obedience to God just as he did. The prophet Isaiah in his servant songs says that Christ has been our suffering servant. But he has also been our victorious servant. The suffering servant who died on the cross also rose again the three days, after three days, after the, as the victorious servant. And he has appointed the church, that is us, as his new servants to be the light unto the world. And this appointment comes with this more or less the same promises that God gave to Joshua. We read about that in Isaiah chapter 54, verses, verse 17. Isaiah 54, verse 17, which says, No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. You shall silence every tongue that rises against you in judgment. That is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. We have been given that privilege and the assurance from God to go out and make disciples of the nations. So these nine chapters force a question on us. We as the new servants of the Lord, with the same assurance that was given to Joshua, will we respond to God like Caleb faithfully? Or will we respond half-heartedly and partially? in our mission to make disciples of Christ? That is the question that these nine chapters force us to answer. Just as much as the promises to the, land, to the, to the nation of Israel was given in the midst of challenges, so is our promise to make disciples of every nation, tongue, and tribe comes with a challenge. I hope and pray, friends, that we will be a people who will respond to God the way Caleb did. Thank you, and God bless you.
we're going to close our service this morning. Um, it's our Thanksgiving Sunday with the song, Jesus, Thank You. Please stand. Let's pray. Because your blood has washed away our sin, Jesus, we thank you. You have declared us not guilty and brought us peace. Jesus, we thank you. You have loved us with an everlasting, unrelenting love. Jesus, we thank you. You have enabled us to be the light of the world. Jesus, we thank you. And you have given us heaven as our eternal inheritance. Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Well, uh, you can have a seat if you like. The formal part of our service is finished, uh, but we continue together in the hub 
I can see some busy beavers out there getting tables ready with lots of delicious looking food. A special morning tea this morning, I believe, uh, provided by the Atpothraj family. Um, so thank you so much uh, for all you've done for us. And I believe that Barista Coffee this morning is free. So save your $2, put it to a good cause and enjoy some free coffee. Uh, just reminding you, there is a separate table for the kids this morning as well. So uh, kids, no eating from the adults' table. More importantly, adults, no eating from the kids' table. <laughs> you won't want to this morning anyway. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this morning and um, yeah, God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> 